Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm pretty excited because I'm gonna show you another video on visual effects craft. And this is one of the new examples that I created with, which is a basically a variation of the sun that I did previously. And I want to show you what I'm doing today to, to basically create this effect where we have particle going to the inside of the circle, basically to the pivot point and then how we can change the direction of them where you know you can see it's going in and then going outside so i want to show you how i did this and basically like i said it's a variation of what i did before so i'm pretty happy with the with the results so far so i hope you enjoy what you're seeing so some of the first things that i that i want you to to know and i keep saying this on every video that i do about visual effects graph is make sure that when you start working on a graph and i'm not a vfx designer whatsoever this is just something that i that i just enjoy doing as a hobby but make sure that you start with you know as not, not too many particles you want to always start with a low rate and also with a low capacity this is going to be the final version of this so that's why i crank this up to you know to a very very large number right now we're looking at five million on the capacity so it's pretty high number to consider that i you know everything that is happening which there's movements happening you know there, there's just a lot of things happening in this particle system so so what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you some of the components and then you can apply these or you can also go into my github repository where i put those in and you can download them for free there's you know there's nothing really that you need to pay for that this is an open source project and i do that with a lot of the things that i do so the one that I've been working on recently is the Unity v VFX Millions of Particles. And, and this one has the names of the scenes that each particle system is on. So this is one, the one that we did before on the sun effect. I also did a fire effect, who, which really got a lot of attention in social media, and I'm really thankful of that. And also I did one where I had a collider with the same effect. And then the other scene is the one that we're looking at right now. And the other thing that I wanted to ask you for is to, if you can, follow me in Twitter. Not because I want you to follow me just to have more people follow me, but because I am posting a lot of information about what I'm doing on a daily basis. I'm posting content in social media. I'm posting the effects that I'm working on. And basically, if you, you, know, if you find me in Twitter and you are following me, you're going to know right away the things that I'm working on. So that's about what I wanted to give you in the intro. So now let's go into Unity and look at some of the components. So right now I have the capacity on this, a constant spawn, a spawn rate. This one is currently set to 100,000. The initial, initialized particle node, which is the entire component, I have a capacity and this is very common to have at the very beginning. I also have the bounds and these are some of the bounds that were already preset by this node. I didn't change anything like that. Some of these components I did change and tweak. So I have the set velocity random. These were the numbers that look good to me. So I left, I, I left them in there. And when you have these many particle systems in, you know, in a vi visual effects graph, it's really hard to see, to, to see, you know, making a change here, you might not see it right away. And that's why I say I start with a lower, a lower capacity because you're gonna start learning about how these nodes work and basically the effects of the of this chain of these is going to change the the nodes the the particles and you're going to see it right away because there's not that many particles in the system but when you start incrementing that number it's going to be really hard unless you're making big changes like physics changes or position changes for instance if i go if i look at the capa the the component here which is a position sphere which is the 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 other component that i have in the initialize you can see that i have a radius of one so if i were to change that radius you're going to start seeing that the middle, the middle section of the, of the effects are starting to change. If I go and make it bigger, you're gonna see the right of the bat. I don't even see the, the outline anymore for the sphere. So I'm just gonna undo and undo. But if I change the arc, you, it's hard to see, but right now the arc is around here, zero point. So you can see that that is making changes. If I make it bigger, now we're making, we're seeing a bigger change. Now it's completely a complete angle angle so that's what i have there and then so set velocity random set lifetime random from one to nine i have the position so this is going to tell the particles that the positioning of the particles is going to be initialized to a sphere everything is starting at the pivot point in the center and then the radius is set to one 
And then of course you can change that radius if you like. So that's everything that I have on the on the initialize. Let me make this a little bigger so we can see more of the graph because I think that's the most important thing right now. We already looked at the, the at the actual effect. So let's go ahead and move here and look at some other components. So the, the other thing that, that I wanted to do is I wanted this to conform to a sphere. So there are physics components in here you can that you can add. So if I hit a space and I have this now selected, it's gonna tell me everything that is available, including you know force, anything that applies to this node. So in this case, force is one of them. So you can see that I'm using the comfort to a sphere and I'm also using the turbulence because I wanted this effect right here that it's really hard to see, but I'll show you what that is and by disabling these, these different components. So let's look at changing these right now. And you can see that if I change the the radius of the comfort to a sphere, things are gonna are gonna start changing. So I think what I'm gonna do for this is let me go ahead and just take take that out. And right off the bat, we see a big change on the on the system. We, we're not really getting the cool sphere effect. So right now it's more like fire particles going around. But if I enable it, now we're starting to get you know more of a sphere effect. And that's what I wanted to that's what I wanted to portray in this effect. So just play with some of those settings. The the other thing that I, I started working on that I, I really like are these notes that are called the period total time. So I explained that on the previous video, but the period total time, it's a node that allows you to specify a range from a minimum to a max. So X means the minimum value, Y means the, the maximum value, and then this is the period. This, this means that over 17 seconds, we're going to go from the number from negative one to one. The reason why I did that is because I wanted to change the attraction speed to give it more, you know, a better look, more randomized look. If I were to remove this, you're going to see that now we're, let me see if I can see, yeah. So you can see that now we're not really seeing many changes. So, but if I start incrementing this number, see if I increment it really fast, you're going to see that the animation is it's getting applied. So that's what this is doing. If I add this T back, which is the results at that time, to the attraction speed, we're going to start getting the animation from negative one to one. You can also increment it. If I want to go, you know, from, from negative one to 10, this is, you know, you're going to see that there's going to be different changes that happen. So just play around with these numbers and then some of these properties, attach notes, and there's just a lot of stuff that you can do. The other thing that I did, I also did on the, another period total time of over five seconds from negative 22 to 10. And then I did that for the for the stick force. And like I said, just remove this and start simple, start moving things around and see how that affects the graph. That's basically what I do when I try to animate some of these things to see how, what reactions I get on the particles and then apply different notes that can, you know, that can make impressive results like the one that we're looking at. At least I call it impressive because I really like it. And the, the other thing that I also have in here is the turbulence. So if I were to remove the turbulence node, it's going to be really boring. There's really no cool, really, you know, there, there won't be any shaking on the particles. I mean, it looks different. It's not bad, but it's very, you know, it's, it's, it's really flat. Like there's really not a lot of detail on the sphere. And you might want that look, but in this case, I wanted something more dynamic. So if I check that, you're going to see that I'm going to start getting a lot more dynamic and uh, dynamic particles. So these are going to create kind of like a, like a turbulence, right? If you're in an airplane and the airplane is shaking, it's going to start doing things like this. So that's what the turbulence node is doing. You're going to specify the noise type. This is going to be the algorithm that it's going to use for randomization. So if I use cellular, that's going to give me a different look. Cell cellular wasn't one wasn't uh, an algorithm that I that I really enjoy. I mean, it works. It does. It does look okay. But I think Perlin, for the most part, in everything that I use, it's a really cool. It gives you really cool effects. So the other thing that I animated in here was the intensity of the turbulence. So I'm gonna remove this node again, just deleting that line. And then if I change this and then make it really high, you're gonna see that the turbulence is just going all crazy and and it's really hard to see. But if I go down to a lower number, turbulence is much smaller, so it's not affecting, it's not shaking each particle that rapidly, and that actually gives it a really cool look. But I'm gonna undo, and I'm going to actually undo one more time, and I'm gonna just add my T on the intensity because I want to go from negative 0 0.8 to 0 0.8 over over five, five second period. So that's the number that I 
that I like and then I just have some settings in here that I set like drag frequency roughness and then octaves so just play around with those and then you know see what effects you can get out of those the other notes that are really important are the the output so this is what it's going to be outputting when the particles are spawned so on in this case I wanted a gradient on the on the particle system so I use a quad output and I did a gradient map the UV mode is simple, blend mode is addictive because I wanted some transparency. You can see that we're going from a transparency to more of an orange, yellow, and then red. And this is a gradient, so you can change it if you like. So the main texture for the most part for the effects that I've been creating, I've been using the default particle that comes with Unity. So that's the one that I'm using here. And then the size, I'm specifying the size. I'm also telling the particles to basically, the orientation of them is gonna be the face camera face camera plane, but you can try face camera position, look at position, and long velocity, depending on the look and feel that you want to accomplish. The size of the particles are really, really small. This should actually be an, a positive number. I try not to go negative, but you know, it just play around with this. And then I also have a scale of X, Y, Z over, over the, the scale of the particles. So I have this other node. And then the eye color over speed is another note that I added as well. I also have a blend color because I'm using a lot of yellow. So I wanted to do another overwrite. So if I were to change this and maybe you want to do a different color, you know, you can kind of overwrite it by adding this, this blend color. So I'm just going to undo that. Let's undo it one more time and go back to the look and feel that we had. And then you can also blend it here if I don't want to apply much of that color to that. And you can also animate this as well. So you can really do a lot of crazy things with these effects and then the last one that I have is just you know an alpha I wanted to have another overwrite which I, I use with these notes and then you can you know determine what the alpha value is gonna be there so that's everything that I have that I have on this node and on this graph so if you guys have any questions on you know anything that I mentioned in this video or the previous videos in regards to visual effects graph let me know in the comments and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel because that really helps me and check out gamedev.net because they have great resources for game developers as well thank you guys